The future of learning is always something uh, uh, which, which uh, MBA programs have to, have to think about. And for that, we have to sort of think about what is the future of work, right? Because our graduates are actually going to go into uh, the industry. And we all would love to have a crystal ball where we could uh, actually look into the future and uh, see, okay, that's, that's what work is going to look like. Unfortunately, we don't have that, right? So we look at what are some of the trends that are happening in the industry. What we see today is uh, artificial intelligence and how that is uh, probably going to make some changes in companies. The jobs of today might not exist tomorrow. Uh, the jobs are probably going to be more high-skilled uh, jobs. We need to look at sustainability. Managers need to look at how the decisions that they make, uh, how, they are, how they are impacting sustainability. Uh, even though we are seeing some decoupling today, but the general arc of history is that we are having more globalization. So managers would have to lead international teams. Uh, so these are some of the directions that we see. And so what are we doing at HQUSD in terms of our digital MBA program to prepare our students for the future? So we constantly look at what is happening in the industry and then we change the curriculum based on what is happening. So we've introduced new courses on artificial intelligence, blockchain, green finance, sustainability and so on. But it's not just about these specific topics. We want to you know, be looking at competencies which are, uh, which are sort of uh, agnostic in terms of the, of the work area. Some examples of that could be critical thinking, right? Uh, it could be strategic vision, leadership, uh, ethical uh, decision making, right? So we do all of that, but we are also looking at how teaching is actually happening. So if you look at what is happening in the industry today, post pandemic, uh, there is a lot of remote uh, work uh, that is happening. So that's also one direction of uh, how work might actually change. So we have thought about, well, why don't we provide remote education? And that is where our digital uh, MBA uh, program comes in. So what we are sort of proposing to our potential MBA students, what we are actually promising to deliver is a world-class quality MBA program delivered to your doorsteps. So I am uh, Jeevan. I am a faculty in the business school uh, in the information systems area. I primarily teach in the master's program. So for the last 20 years, I've been teaching in the MBA program. And very recently, uh, we've started with the digital MBA program. So I was one of the pioneers with uh, you know, uh, developing a course and teaching uh, two cohorts of that program. I think the skill sets for any MBA student is always a great question to start off with. So maybe I'll start off with my experience. So I teach a course in uh, technology. And as you know, with technology, we really cannot predict uh, what technologies will be used in the future, uh, let alone tomorrow, right? So I always tell my students in the first class, we are not telling you what's the technology today. We're not telling, not telling you what the technology is going to be tomorrow, but we are preparing you so that you could make decisions about technologies which are 20 years from now. So you need to develop or develop these critical thinking skills so that no matter what the technology is, you know, you will be able to make these decisions about them uh, in the future. So that's very specific to uh, my course in technology management. Now we talk about MBAs in, in general, uh, you know, we want to have that strategic vision. That is, you're not just looking at what is going to happen when you make a decision today, but what's going to happen five years from now based on what you've made. What is going to be the impact in terms of competition? We need to have them an international outlook because markets are going to be increasingly globalized. So you need to be leading teams which are international in nature, cross-border communication uh, and so on. Uh, sustainability is a, uh, is a key issue, so you need to look at how your decisions are going to impact uh, you know, sustainability at, uh, at your companies. Then uh, ethical leadership. 
uh, how your decisions are having an impact on, on society. So the world is constantly changing and we want our students to be able to be flexible so that they can adapt uh, to the marketplace. So I think um, those are some skill sets which, uh, which we want our students to have. The course is actually critical thinking and uh, leadership, right? Uh, critical thinking for managers. And critical thinking, if you, well, if you ask people, people will come up with a hundred definitions uh, about critical thinking. But for me, critical thinking is about the process of thinking, right? Thinking about the process of thinking, how you are actually making uh, decisions. And that is very important for managers to know. You know, what is their process of, uh, of decision making? So in our course, and I've actually also developed an exec ed program, which is based on it, we are actually looking at biases that impact managers uh, when they make uh, decisions. Some of the cognitive uh, biases, you know, some of the decisions may be uh, emotional, um, you know, in nature. Um, there is the sunk cost fallacy. Uh, you know, you've already put in so much money into, into a project, you know, you want to get it through. And because you are the person who've actually led the program, uh, you are, uh, you want to see it through. You don't want it to be a failure. So it's about, you know, being aware of some of these biases that uh, managers face. And I think that is a very important skill uh, that is needed for, uh, for managers today. This is always a challenge, right? How, how, do, how do we teach things so that, you know, our MBA students, uh, you know, remember that, you know, 10 years from now? How, how do we make learning stick? And I would like to start off by talking about this Chinese proverb, which is, uh, you hear, you forget, you see, you remember, you do, you understand, right? Um, and we, we really take this to heart and we truly believe that if students were just sitting in the classroom and just listening to the professors, they would forget it, right? So how do we make sure that actually people do things in the classroom? How do they apply what they have learned uh, to something? And one of the ways that we do it is through, uh, through case studies, right? I talked about the Mount Everest case. Similarly, we have other cases where we put students in a situation. What would you do uh, you know, in this situation? And then when they come to class, they are not just learning from the faculty, they're learning from other students who are in the classroom. So they build on top of uh, what other people uh, have said. So they are applying you know, the theories. And that helps uh, you know, in, in terms of the learning stake because they can see the relevance with practice and I have students who come in years later and they tell me, hey, professor, I still remember the case from, uh, you know, the time that we discussed uh, company XYZ, right? And so that tells me that, you know, when we do these cases, students remember uh, these cases. Apart from that, what the program is doing is we have a lot of experiential learning. So we have internships, we have uh, company projects, we have case competitions and that all provides an opportunity for students to apply what they have learned to a practical situation. And that helps, you know, in terms of uh, the learning sticking. Th there are two ways to think about it, right? So one is that you have the same case study, but some of the lessons could be different, right? And one of the uh, faculties who I met very early on, he said, you know, be flexible in the classroom don't go with the idea that you want to convey these teaching objectives because those teaching objectives what some of the lessons are they continue to change right so one way to think about it okay you still have an old case but some of the lessons could be different right uh, the other way to look at it is, is that you introduce new cases right which are which are already uh, you know catering towards the lessons of, uh, of today, right? So both of them can work uh, very well, uh, having, you know, both these strategies. Uh, and students are, are good. They will, they will see the relevance of, 
uh, of an even an old case uh, to the new situation today. When we thought about this hybrid format, and this question has come up multiple times, and it has always been this idea that, well, hybrid is not going to be the same level of quality as, uh, as, the, uh, as, as a normal physical program. And to be very honest with you, for many years, I certainly believe that. Uh, so MBA directors in the past, they have asked me, you know, why don't you develop a blended learning course? And I said, well, you know, I add value by being in class, interacting with students and so on. But you know, after having developed this program for the digital MBA, having taught for it, you know, my mind has totally changed about the benefits of, of hybrid, right? Let me uh, talk about a couple of points. Well, what do we see in the industry today? Well, executives are getting more and more busy, right? They might not have the time to, to wake up in the morning, come to a physical classroom. They're always traveling, right? If work is going to be international, they're going to be traveling a lot. So how do you manage an MBA program and work uh, at the same time, right? So this is where our digital MBA program comes in and says that, well, we can provide a world-class quality program and you can be sitting at home. How do we do that? We divide up our program into asynchronous content and synchronous content. So we have a world-class platform in which the executives, they can choose their own free time and they can study. Uh, they can do it at five o'clock in the morning. They could do it at 12 o'clock in the night. They have the freedom uh, to do it. And then they come for the synchronous session in our state-of-the-art classroom. They don't have to come to the physical classroom. They all beam in from different locations of the world. And that is where the faculty is adding value. The faculty is developing and building on the skill sets that have been learned uh, asynchronously, right? So after having done this program, you know, I saw the value that was coming from it. And I said, well, I need to take some of the stuff that is happening in this hybrid mode and bring it to our physical classroom because I think that maybe to some extent our physical classrooms may be lagging in terms of quality. So we have turned the, uh, you know, the switch around and I tr totally believe that our hybrid program is delivering a very, very high quality for our MBA students and that has been our experience having taught uh, two cohorts of the digital MBA. Asia Pacific is one of the hot spots in terms of the economy. Uh, it's also turning into a hub for technology and uh, innovation. Uh, if we look at supply chains, even though we have seen some decoupling in the last few months, but overall, the supply chains in Asia Pacific are still going to exist. So if we look at what companies need to be doing, they need to be squeezing out efficiencies in these supply chains. Uh, so they need technology for that. So this is a great place if you know people are thinking about digital transformation. Uh, this is a great place uh, to be. Now, why specifically HKUST? Now, if you look at 30 years back, what was the reason HKUST was founded? Uh, this was, you know, visioned as a school for innovation. So we have entrepreneurship and uh, innovation in sort of our DNA. Right. So we give freedom to our faculty to try out new things. And one of them was the digital MBA program. But we also try out new technologies. Uh, we have the state of the art uh, classroom. Uh, we are also working with uh, many other technologies, some of which are confidential. I cannot reveal uh, at this point of time. But we always you know, try and do new things, even if we fail. We are a young university. We don't have hundreds of years of tradition. So we are completely okay uh, with breaking away from the past. Yes, we have a physical MBA program, but we also have uh, a digital MBA program, which is, uh, which is a break from, from the past. So what do we want to do? We want our students to imbibe our spirit, our DNA. And our DNA is that of innovation and, uh, and entrepreneurship. We have world-class faculty. Uh, who have experience in blockchain technologies, artificial intelligence, um, data mining, right? You name it. So by being at HKUST, they take classes from these, uh, from these faculty, but they have interactions with them. They also work on projects with them. And by doing all of that, 
uh, we hope that you know they will take that spirit. So HKUST and Asia Pacific uh, is a good place to be, you know, if you are uh, if you are looking towards the future.